It's been another very solid year for Switch, and we still have two star-studded titles left to release as we move towards 2019. But as always, there are some games that we regret buying, and we're back for year two, round two, of the Switch games we're kind of sad we ended up getting. Now, these very well might be great games, and they might be really fun games for a lot of people, but for us personally, we didn't enjoy them, and they were looked at as things we regretted about the Switch and its lineup this year. Not every game we play is going to be a winner. It's very unrealistic to expect that. There are some of these that I was really excited for, and they let me down, and that's why they end up on a list like this. Not because we hate them, not because we think they're terrible, nothing of the sort. It's just for us and our time, we kind of regret that this is some of the stuff we decided to dedicate to. And uh, with that, Zach, I hope that's enough of the disclaimer here. Are we going to get into the list? Yeah, we're, th we're throwing these games in our bummer box, not because they're bad, but because they bummed us out. Let us know in the comments down below if there's any Switch games you regret buying here in year two in 2018. We'd love to hear what titles they are and why. But we're going to start things off, Gabe, uh, with a little title called Payday 2. Oh, man, Zach. <laughs> when this first got announced, it kind of became a little bit of a running joke for us on the channel because we would talk about how excited we were to like play this game that's clearly not for us, and it's a little bit older, and we had no idea why it existed on Switch, and we didn't think it was going to do very well, and yeah, we were confused. Then we played it. We even played it online co-op together, right? and we did not have a great time, did we? No, and I, I do wonder if we're going to get a lot of these next year, given how many games from a decade ago seem to be hitting the Switch in 2019. But Payday 2 came out February 27, 2018, after a number of delays, as Gabe mentioned. It's $50, and I sure did not find $50 worth of fun. It feels very antiquated. It's nice to have a first-person shooter on Switch, but there's far better options than Payday 2. I, I've never liked Payday, so you can, you know, mark me down as one who's never been a fan of this game, um, but I think it is not a good time, uh, and again, you can do a whole lot better on Switch. Look at the uh, company named Bethesda and the titles that they put out. I think those would be a far better use of your money. Yeah, and also the fact that this is like multiplayer focused and, yeah. you know, it, it was you and I, maybe it's not even like set up for us necessarily. Maybe it's more fun if you have like four friends and, and all of that. Like, I know you and I regret the time we spent with it just because we were never going to get the most out of this experience. And I had the experience originally way back when it uh, was released on Xbox 360. And yeah, and any game that was like on 360 and then ended up coming coming to Switch, I'm like, okay. Like, it's cool that it's here, but we've played it before and, yeah, Payday 2 was not a 2018 game experience for me. Indeed. Now we're going to go to the indie side of the spectrum in a game that had... It, 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 it had our hearts, and then it broke them. Morphe's Law released on August 20th for $20, and yikes, was that a mess. And I, and I feel bad because the concept, the idea was all there. We were, we were hyped for this thing, seeing it at numerous Nintendo showcases... But it just did not show out. Uh, it had a lot of issues. It's lacking in a lot of departments. And I think, honestly, of, of all the bummers, this might be the biggest for both of us. Yeah, I was, I was like surprisingly excited, right? And then we found out that it was going to be released almost like as a surprise and that it ended up coming. And I said this back then. I was like, hey, if you would have told me at the beginning of the week that by the end of the week we'd be playing Morpheus Law, I wouldn't have believed you. But sure <laughs> enough, it came out. And boy, did it have issues. The hit detection was like really bad. And the servers were like super laggy. It was a very dull experience. And the fact that it wasn't free to play. Because it felt like a free to play game that just wasn't very yeah. good. But you had to pay $20. And when you're paying for an online only experience like that. And you jump on. And the first few hours of your experience with this game is like lag after lag after lag. And then just like boring in gameplay, even though conceptually it's very cool and the unlocking and the progression is done in a very cool way, it was just never fun to play for me, and that was such a big bummer. Yeah, I I wish you could see the face I'm making right now because I feel so bad because, again, it does have a good idea, and it, it, I don't know if it was a lack of funds, a lack of time. It just did not come together, and I think what's extra weird about this one is Nintendo propped it up 
quite a bit, and the, you know, say what you will about the Nintendo seal of quality, but I was surprised that for a game that they pushed themselves multiple times, it came out like this. So Morphe's Law, unfortunately, is one that I would probably stay pretty far away from. The next game on our list, oh, oh my goodness gracious, it, it came out just before Dark Souls Remastered, trying to offer a Dark Souls Light experience for $18.99. October 18th saw the release of Sinner, Sacrifice for Redemption, and I don't... I You'd have to make me sacrifice a lot <laughs> to to want to play this again. Zach, I actually defeated some of these enemies. The, the bosses, it's a bush, uh, boss rush uh, game heavily influenced by Dark Souls. There is no exploration. There's no RPG elements. There's, there's none of that stuff. You're going to have the same weapons. Oh, man. Like, some of these bosses were, like, infuriatingly, like, infuriatingly difficult to, to defeat. It just throw it just throws you in there. Like, there's virtually no setup. There is a very minute tutorial. And then these very difficult bosses with, I would say, like, okay controls, but not anywhere near the precision that you would want from a game uh, this demanding. And it just, to me, it felt very, like, PC early access. It feels very just not... I don't know, the, the opening of the eShop to 20, 30 titles a week has definitely let through some games that I'm like, I, I don't think this feels like finished or ready, and this was one where I was like, oh god, just get me, like, Dark Souls is old, but Dark Souls feels a heck of a lot better than Sinner does. For something like this, I would imagine that they just really needed to get it out before Dark Souls, because once Dark Souls was out, there was no way this game was going to have a chance, and, and it was only out a week before Dark Souls, and, you know, I had even made a video talking about, like, hey, could you have a comparable, like, Dark Souls experience for, like, half the price, and that didn't, no. end, that, it did not end up being the case. Uh, structurally, the game does some interesting things, right, because you, you have these, like, uh, graves that you get to go visit and there's bosses and for every boss you fight you're gonna get um like some sort of power taken away like your shield would be like broken or you'll have like half hell so they make the game harder and harder as it goes but it just led to more frustration and after defeating a, a, a few of the bosses i'm like okay how the heck am i supposed to like keep going with this it it, it felt like a, the game felt like a sacrifice it also felt like a sin zach yeah again you would have to like Hey, like I'll I'll sacrifice and give you I don't know, double, double, Mendocino Farms sandwich gift cards and double, uh, you know Jamba Juice smoothie experiences for me to play this again. I, I looked at the reviews and like everyone would gave it fives and sixes, saying that the graphics are good, the bosses are are pretty cool, the concept is there, the gameplay is what kills it, and to me a game's gameplay without much story or lore, you know, virtually any, like, to me, that's a far worse score than a six if you're you're sinning on the thing that is paramount to this type of a title. You gotta have the controls in the gameplay, and this one didn't have it. Let's go to um, a little bit higher tier of a title, Gabe, and uh, work our way through why you regret Valkyria Chronicles 4. I regret it because it made the ultimate sin, I'm gonna go back to Sinner a little bit here, of you know, not keeping me interested. I, I played maybe like eight or nine hours of it. Uh, the story was on point and, and the game's not bad. Don't get me wrong. But the reason I regret it is that I spent close to 10 hours with it and I was never motivated to keep playing. And if a game's not motiv motivating me to keep playing and it just like loses me, I have to fault the game for that. It, it wasn't coming out in a super busy period. So it's not like I had a whole lot of other games coming out. It's just... It lost my interest completely, and I don't know. For for me, if you're playing this like long story based game uh, that that's very dependent on the choices you make, because you know there's permanent death here for for, for uh, these characters. Like, and I still wasn't invested. Like, something has to be wrong there. Yeah, I think this is a, a very big case of what we said at the top. This still could be a very great game. It has an 82 on Metacritic. Like, it was received pretty well, just not working for us. And I think, for me, this franchise started very high. Valkyria Chronicles, the original, I loved that game. And for me, like, every successive title has slipped further and further. And I don't know if we're just in a different era now and have different expectations, but the story is sluggish. And while releasing on September 25th of this year... 
it came out far before in Japan, and that always to me is like an odd feeling of like, okay, reviews are out there, people have experienced this, and we haven't. It is a full price title, and one that, if that's your cup of tea, you might drink it and find it delicious, but Gabe and I were, like he said, kind of bored and not finding an incentive to come back, and on a system that doesn't have a lot of third-party stuff, while this is great to see from Sega, it struck us as odd that we weren't more inclined to play, even with limited options. This one is, like Zach mentioned, the perfect example of what we said on top, where like the game's like great, probably. It's just not for us, and I, I want to make sure to make that clear for this one. Absolutely. All right, we're going to move to a sequel that we thought would steal our our shows because NBA season was approaching. We were pretty pumped for Playgrounds 2, especially after the 2K games succeeded on Switch and then NBA Playgrounds was adopted into the 2K family for this second go-round. It didn't go round real nice for you, though, Gabe. Yeah, they messed this up completely with one thing and one thing only because the gameplay is still like really fun and, and the game's still charming, but the microtransactions killed it. And maybe that's 2K's doing, maybe it's not. They fixed a lot of what was at fault with the originals gameplay, like the rebound and things like that. All that was like fixed. Uh, they have a lot of the same music in there as well. I'm like, what? Like, this feels like more budget than the original one, and it was already uh, pretty budget. You can still have fun with it. It's just that these like microtransactions and like leveling up to get these card packs is so cumbersome. It takes so long, and I never really got any of the players I wanted. And, and you know that that's the way things go with these. If you're opening up card packs, you're not going to get exactly who you want, so you're incentivized to keep playing. Um, but since it's like such slow progress to be able to unlock all these things you are expected to go do it with real money and i was never going to do that for nba nba playgrounds too that just wasn't my thing they killed this game with microtransactions and i'm really bummed about it yeah microtransactions upset people at very different levels i'm not one who's offended by them as much as most but at 30 dollars, as gabe mentioned it did really bum him out and cause a lot of regret it released on october 15th and the game is solid if you can see past that um but yeah there there was quite a bit of of feedback across the board of like yikes like the microtransactions and the grind that this game expects from you is really over the top and tarnishes what should be like a simple to execute game like man i just wish nba jam would come back because i loved on fire edition i thought that was fantastic me and my brother played that so much i don't know why they can't just do that again it seems like this is the the modern day amalgamation that we get of street style two on two quick basketball. Uh, but yeah, NBA playgrounds to unfortunately marred uh, by microtransactions. That moves us to our final game on the list. <sighs> I'm, I'm stressed to say it, but it's Nintendo Labo. And not because the idea is not a good one, not because the cardboard broke and bent not because it's not a fun different take on how to experience and enjoy your switch but because the games themselves did not grab us i liked building the stuff i liked it from that experience i liked it as a toy that you got to figure out over a just bunch of hours they are complex builds but the actual stuff that's on the cartridge it's it's not for us each one of us got one of the Robo and Variety kits, and we tried them out. And yeah, I had fun making a video with my cat, <laughs> just because, like, hey, I got to put my cat in a video. But yeah, beyond that, the actual Labo experience, look, it was never catered to us. It was never meant for 28-year-old men the bit to do. Like, unless you have children, and then, like, yeah, like, it's, like, super cool to see them be creative. And if you have that creativeness in you, and you did enjoy it, regardless of your age, awesome. But for Zach and I, it, it's not something that we continue to spend time with after those first couple of days. Yeah, and again, it's, it's like, a tale of two experiences, really, because the building, we're good. The games, not so much. And as the Switch is a game-playing console, I felt like there was a little bit of disparity there that I don't know, if Nintendo came out with, like, these cool, almost Lego-style builds that then you got to, like, play with in the real world more so, maybe that would have been fun, but again, as a video game company and as a, an, a very, an entrepreneur of new ideas and unique play styles, I applaud them for this, and they even came out with a, a third kit, which surprised me, the vehicle kit that recently released, and I've heard that that one is a better time 
But the first two, I just felt like that's a lot of money to spend to build something for a few hours, which depending on who you are can feel like a chore or feel like a charm. The games, though, they, they don't... I would rather spend my money on Smash, Pokemon, uh, even Kirby, Bayonetta, some of the other things, any of the other things, really, that Nintendo put out this year. So that's our list for Games We Regret 2018 Year 2 Edition. Running them back, we've got Payday 2, Morphe's Law, Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption, Valkyria Chronicles 4, NBA Playgrounds 2, and Nintendo Labo. Let us know in the comments down below if you regret any games that you got this year and why. We'd love to hear your list. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Again, these games, you can still have fun with them. They can still be solid. They can even review really well. They just weren't for us, and we felt some regret. So, Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch. And this year, we've got a lot more to do before we get to the wrap-ups, but we will have full year two wrap-ups as we move to 2019. You can follow us on Twitter and Discord for up-to-the-minute updates and status checks on when those Pokemon and Smash Bros. videos will be coming in the near future. In the meantime, though, for myself and Gabe, a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. We love you. Switch Force, out.